Okay, so this is a first impressions video of the Phoenix Feather 7 foot 1 light spinning rod. You'll see right away that it has sort of a unique reel seat. That is Phoenix's own reel seat. It's not Fuji. The guides are made by Essex. And there's a quick shot of the tip action. So I would say the tip is moderate fast leaning towards fast it does shut off pretty sharply past the third guide and the rod is rated to 3a sounds it definitely wants to stay under 3a sounds so here i have a quarter ounce jig head with a 3.3 inch kitec fat impact and that the total package weighs about half an ounce and definitely is overloading this rod which is fine uh, that was my first cast and you'll see very quickly something very strange happening watch the line right there the line is stuck to the blank and this happens over and over again I'm not sure why I suspect it's the distance between the first guy to the real seat it seems to be longer than standard and also the first guide is very small um, I have this paired up to a Daiwa Ballistic 2500 size reel which I think is pretty standard most people getting this rod they're gonna put a 2500 or 3000 size reel on it um, I might go down to the 1000 size to see if it would alleviate that problem but it doesn't really affect anything the way I'm fishing it now I can see if you're slow rolling a spy bait or you know just like a steady winding of a swim bait paddle tail you can feel the line hitting the blank and if getting the smaller spool diameter in the 1000 size doesn't solve this problem, I might have to look elsewhere. So this rod retails for $149 and here's the thing. It weighs 2.85 ounces on my scale. And that is pretty remarkable, especially for a production rod. And the real seat, I thought I wouldn't like it but so far so good I don't really feel the design is intrusive it certainly helps keep the weight down now how you feel about this real seat will depend on how you hold your spinning rod if you hold it the way I do with the real stem between your pinky and ring finger then I think you shouldn't have a problem with it but I know some people like my cousin he holds his his spinning rod with all fingers in front of the real seat and in that case you're not gonna like this rod there's really nothing there except blank for you to hold on to um, the mega bass and standard Daiwa spinning reel seats are much more comfortable if you put all all fingers in front of the reel and other than that I really had no problem with it. It felt fine under pressure, under load, while casting, retrieving. It's a pretty cool feature. One other thing is the lock nut on this reel is very smooth. There's no knurling, there's really no purchase, and it works fine now when the weather is warm, but I've noticed on the Zodius rods with the aluminum nut, it gets a little difficult to tighten or loosen in cold weather and I much prefer some sort of EVA or cork something that gives your hand a little bit more purchase when you're mounting or dismounting your reel. In terms of sensitivity it's about average for rods in this price point. I will put it slightly under that of the Zodius rods that I have a lot of experience with definitely nowhere close to the x bride rods that I've been fishing with for the past year um, everything feels a little bit mushy and 
you're definitely not feeling hits on slack line. But as I explained in my X Pride and Mega Bass Hayuga video, that really is just a bonus. I'm normally watching the line anyway while I'm jigging. So you're not relying on feeling the bite. <laughs> What's up? I'm a fan of the channel. Thank you. <laughs> um, very nice guys who happen to recognize me on the water. Always sort of awkward for me at least. So here I hooked into a decent sized robin. Uh, they're everywhere this year and I like how this rod loads up on fish. It's a pretty smooth bend in the rod. It's very easy to keep pressure on the fish. I'm using the Picasso quarter ounce tungsten jig heads. They come with a GAMI 3-06-04 hook and penetrating the fish's jaw is just a flick of the wrist. There's a lot of power past the third guide of this rod and I think it would do well. I have confidence that I can probably land pretty decent sized fluke and there you see again the line is just completely wrapped around the blank. Which is pretty remarkable. I'm not sure. This, this is not the first rod I've bought with very questionable guide placement. I had a Lamy glass. I think it was a TFX bucktailing rod. It's a great rod, but it needed an extra stripper guide. And without it, every time you load up the rod, the line literally goes past the blank. And I don't know what these guys are thinking when they design these rods, but there is something wrong here. That, that cannot be normal. So anyway, here I'm using the 4-inch Easy Shiner on the same jig head and all shorts today. I had over 25 shorts, numerous robins, and I didn't really upsize the bait because I wanted to test out this rod and it's definitely a fun rod to fish with. I would say for 150 bucks, sub three ounce rod is worth a shot. And so far so good, even with the weird guy placement. So the next clip is from last year. Really what I plan on using this rod for is my giant crankbait porgies. Yep, and porgy season is right around the corner. So hopefully you enjoyed this very preliminary initial impressions video of the Phoenix Feather Rod. And I will post updates to this throughout the season. Thanks for watching.